I, I find entrepreneurship to be like a, a, a freeing experience. You know what I'm saying? It's like you, you're able to take your creativity and put it out there. We all have talents, we all have skills. Um, and to be able to just take that and, and take it to, to the marketplace and people see the, the value in it, um, to not just become a customer once, but become a customer uh, over and over. And, and really, you know, when, when you think about entrepreneurship or you think about business, businesses solve problems. So what you're pretty much seeing is uh, a need in the society, a problem in the society that you're, you're going to endeavor to fix and fix better than your competition. And, and doing that gives you a, a, freeing, uh, a freeing experience. You know, it's almost very fulfilling where you can you know, take your solutions to the marketplace and people see value in it and they decide you know, to pay you for it. The, 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 the real freeing experience really comes from um, knowing that you're blessing someone with your solutions because that's, that's what you're doing. You're making uh, life easier. You know, when you look at the, the trajectory of the history of entrepreneurs, you know, we can continuously uh, take the risk, go out in the marketplace and, and develop our society and make it a better place and where uh, some of the solutions or some of the problems become so, so minute or so minuscule that uh, we, we, we no longer even knew that was a problem. You know, we no longer realized that this was such a huge problem. You know, bringing water to our homes, um, you know, bringing certain products that, 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 that you know, beautify us or, 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 or solves our, our hunger or, you know, these different tools that we use on a daily basis, they become so standard or so part of our, our lives that we, we, we forget that entrepreneurs were behind this, uh, behind these ideas. And, and to me, it's just, you know, when you bring your gifts and talents to the marketplace to just see that, um, you know, unfolding and you're, you're able to make a living from that. And, and, and of course, being a good steward over um, you know, your, your, your rewards, your financial rewards is, is also part of being a good entrepreneur and it being a freeing experience. You know, it's not just for, for us to hoard or, or just for our benefit, you know, in a, from, from us blessing individuals with our skills and talents, we're also uh, inclined to or have the obligation to take our financial um, blessings and, and take that elsewhere and, and bless others with it. So it's 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 a very just a very freeing and fulfilling uh, lifestyle to live. I think um, businesses for the black community is largely important. And give me a a minute to really um, verbalize or conceptualize this into. A, a very critical uh, conversation. Um, you know, blacks, especially in America, uh, are still largely marginalized. And um, I'm not saying marginalized in the sense where we're hated or, or, or seen as less than or, you know, have the harsh treatments, but we're marginalized by even those that are the largest inclusionists in our society, those that, that look at uh, uh, black people as being part of the fabric of America. We're still marginalized by even those individuals in the context where they look at our, our community saying that we need help. You know, we, 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 we're helpless or, or they should feel sympathetic towards us. And um, I think when that happens, it really often marginalizes our talents to the point where we, we start to believe that you know, we need more help than we, we really do. You know, it's, it's really just a, a economic solution to many of the things that we, we do. But, um, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things where, where we're, we're seen as individuals, you know, a black guy walking down the street, it's, it's very unlikely that he's a huge or largely successful individual. Okay, it's because it's just it's just the minority of a society. Now that's not saying that blacks don't have the talents necessary, but what happens is um, just to kind of shift gears a little bit, the the, the 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 blacks with the greatest talent tend to take that talent to uh, corporations or government, and that leaves the black enterprises struggling 
for good talent to, to exist within our communities. Now, when you're talking about uh, looking at us with the highest unemployment rate or the highest uh, crime rate or poverty rate or incarceration rates, that's simply because of the lack of entrepreneurs, black entrepreneurs within our community. Um, inside of our community, um, you know, when you go or you travel into the inner city or just, you know, the black community, you, you tend to see a lot of our communities are in, in, in bad shape, they're deplorable. Uh, those that make it, those that you know, get attached to a, a machine that uh, is able to financially take care of them in abundance, they leave those communities, okay? And when you go into any community, the standard of living is, is a representation of the type of entrepreneurs that are in that community. Because every good or, or service that, that a community is able to benefit from comes from the entrepreneurs that exist that allows those things to be brought to the market. So largely the quality of life, the simple quality of life in our societies is, is, is contingent on having great entrepreneurs within our community. Now, uh, you know, just, just, just kind of switching gears back to understanding um, where those entrepreneurs may, may or wh why is it really needed, um, we, we don't see the, the mainstream level type businesses that exist within under black ownership. They're, they're far and few between. Um, I mean, we've seen radicals come and go and, 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 and not able to articulate the message. They know exactly what uh, needs to be said, but articulating the message with, with ruffle feathers or, or, or make them label as a, a, a separationist or, 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 you know, things of that nature, um, you know, and the, the anti-desegregation, um, um, you, you know, it, we, we see that happen. But, but the fact remains that um, the dollars don't circulate in our community. And I don't want to get on, get into the to the to the normal sound bites and you know here we go again type of conversation, but it's it's really uh, you know factual when we look at you know one of the top consumers in our in our society are are African Americans, but yet we we don't have that same type. It doesn't reflect in the circulation of our money, and and until we are able to accept the fact or, or one solid generation is able to accept the fact that we will be paid less and still expect to pay more, um, our, our economy is not going to become uh, sustainable. You know, that that's, goes back to why, I'm, why I say um, we, we're marginalized and it's, it's really a, a marginalization because we have yet to become a, a, a community that is, that is subsistent, that we're able to function in and of itself. Um, and of course it goes back to some of the trauma of what was attacked um, when you know blacks were trying to uh, progress. Uh, our economy was attacked, our businesses were attacked, our assets were attacked, and then our lives, which is again, you know, goes back to our assets. But those were the things that were attacked. So that, that fear uh, has, has become generational, it's, it's handed to uh, your offspring and subsequent generations, and, and then it, become, it became part of our culture, that if you rise to be part of the, the talented 10th in the 21st century, you need to take that talent and, and deposit it into a, a, a corporation. That's where you're going to get your rewards and your pat on the back and your prestige or at government. But don't dare take the chance or the risk of going into um, business for yourself. And, and until we accept that we may get paid less because uh, we're working for black businesses and pay more because we have less uh, consumers that are supporting the black businesses, we won't be able to, you know, organically grow. Um, you know, that's really, you know, part of the, part of the issues that we're going to see. And, 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 and until it, it, this message really, um, you know, gets to, 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 to the masses, um, and not just this message, but the message that um, we have to be able to resist or reject um, the, the, resist or reject the, the temptations or the allure 
of the mainstream level of spending or the mainstream level of, of, of the way we do business or the way we handle our finances or economics or our culture. Uh, because simply put, our, our, our community is not to the level where we can just be reckless spenders, uh, not investing and not supporting ourselves and really just get to the next level. So entrepreneurship, those with the discipline, those with the foresight, those with the intestinal fortitude to push through some of the challenges that come with entrepreneurship is very necessary. And those, those, that potential lies in the individuals that have the, 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 the competence and the, the, the wherewithal to, you know, go out there and actually make it happen rather than, you know, people resorting to entrepreneurship out of desperation or frustration or, or lack of engagement from, um, you know, corporations because you, you have a felony conviction or you don't have the qualifications that's necessary. And these are typically who uh, resort to entrepreneurship, never really uh, growing out of the community into, you know, mainstream businesses. So it's entrepreneurship is, is increasingly horribly uh, important for, for the black community. The, the government can do three main things when it comes to um, helping to foster small businesses, and they, they're very simple. Uh, one, we got to look at our, our, our minimum wage laws. Now, this may seem, um, you know, a little <laughs> controversial in a sense, but if you think about it, the, the federal minimum wage uh, applies to every single business in America, okay? Um, largely not impacting or affecting the corporations. Now, these are the, this is the target for government. They, they, when government speaks about, uh, you know, minimum wage and, and labor, it, it looks at, it includes, the, the, and the conversation includes the corporations, you know, the Walmarts, the McDonald's, the huge corporations, but that, they're only a small percentage of all the businesses in America. You have small businesses that really can't afford to pay, you know, labor laws that, or, labor, or wages that seem very high. So th this comes with a, it's a double-edged sword here. Uh, how are they able to compete with the bigger corporations that, that can stomach uh, that kind of an of a increase, okay? Um, and then when you think about stomaching that increase, the larger corporations may not necessarily have to go up on their prices. A small business will, will, will have to go up on, on their prices. So what I think needs to happen is there should, should be some type of exemption for smaller businesses when it comes to uh, the, the, the minimum wage. And, and there are actually people out there who would work for visionary-driven or visionary-aspiring-type businesses for less than a minimum wage, and, and if they if they if they decide to do that, what happens now? We have people being getting paid under the table. So, though the government would be seeing added benefits by increasing the minimum wage, uh, because they're getting uh, additional tax revenues, employment tax revenues, they're going to see either people one lose jobs or two individuals start to get paid under the table. Individuals who uh, don't mind working for less than minimum wage, getting paid under the table, and that tax revenue is is now non-existent for the government. So what, what the government really needs to do is uh, pass laws that are applicable. I mean, it, it could just be two or three categories uh, that are tiered for the, the type of revenues a business creates to say, okay, this is your minimum wage, and this is your minimum wage, and this is your minimum wage based on the size of the company. It'll make companies more competitive, and it, and it would encourage more smaller businesses to be able to take that leap, hire more people, and take those chances. I mean, that, that's one, just to create some type of, um, you know, uh, labor, labor modification for, for smaller businesses. Um, two, I think there, there should be some type of Section 8 program. For, for businesses, we have Section 8 for individuals living, living in homes. But, you know, we've seen real estate shot through the roof. Uh, we got small businesses that are continuing to operate out of their homes, out of P.O. boxes, out of mail drops, UPS stores, that type of stuff, because they simply can't afford to have a physical presence. Now, a physical presence adds to the prestige and the respect of a business. You have a physical presence, it really shows that you're committed, you're not doing this thing on the side, you really have a presence in the marketplace. However, real estate has gotten so high, so there should be some type of program that 
that uh, that assists businesses um, with their with their with their their overhead, their lease payments. Um, you know, like a Section Eight program. I, you know, I, I can't get into the intricacies. You know, in such a short interview, but. Uh, that's just one of the other things they should do. Try to help offset some of the, that that type of expense, like they do for individuals living in in homes in Section Eight approved homes. And three, just tax breaks. Um, if they provide some type of incentive, uh, tax breaks, um, where individuals can get in and get their businesses going for a, a certain amount of time before they actually have to uh, pay in heavily into to the taxes. Now that's you know that's a a, a, a fine line to kind of walk because um, you know government got to operate. You know I don't you know neglect the the fact that um, or deny the fact that government has to operate. Government has to have a presence in the marketplace to enforce certain things um, and, and make certain things happen for other individuals. So you know it does have to have uh, our, our you know revenue. But one thing that's totally different with businesses and government is. Um, businesses can, I mean, the government can force you to buy their goods and services, and if you don't, you get a penalty or a fine or imprisonment if you're not paying into the government system for goods and services that you may not even need. Um, but individuals, businesses can't do that. So, you know, there's a, there's a little advantage there where businesses can't force people to buy their goods and services or imprison you or fine you or whatever. So businesses have to show some type of ingenuity in making sure um, they attract or appeal to the, to the open market. So I think, uh, you know, the government has to show some fiduciary duty, uh, not just to the people, but to the people who own businesses at the same time to ensure that they're not being railroaded or, or, or pushed out of the marketplace because um, their costs are so exorbitant, or exuberant that they can't uh, be able to compete. So you know that's 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 one of the things I think, or three of the things I think, government uh, can do for small businesses. I, I don't know if uh, I would say there's an actual fear so much for the black entrepreneur. I, I think there there's more of a a fear perhaps for, you know, black people of power, uh, too many black people rising with, with power. And, and, and see, this is where, um, you know, race relations really should just be re reconciled because, um, you know, an entrepreneur really, a successful entrepreneur really is the most powerful person um, in, 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 in the community, in society. You know, we, we tend to, you know, use the sound bites that politicians are the most powerful people, but politicians can't uh, have what they have or fund their campaigns or whatever without courting entrepreneurs or courting businesses. Um, you know, businesses pretty much set the standard for life. And I think what, what, ha what has happened or what, what the, 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 the hysteria is, the subliminal hysteria is, you know, what would happen to society if you know, tons of black people rise to be successful. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think it's not nurtured. So my message to entrepreneurs, black entrepreneurs specifically is, you know, we got to heal, we got to get past um, issues that were done to us. We not necessarily forget what was done to, to our ancestors, not even necessarily directly to us. I mean, I know things happen um, isolatedly uh, across the country, but really in, in massive form, the things that, the disparities, the Jim Crow, the harsh treatment and discrimination really took place uh, largely to our ancestors, our, our you know grandparents, you know my age, grandparents, great grandparents. But but I think what we need to do is is heal, get past you know, the hurt, and and not you know focus on any type of of retribution or or revenge. You know, and I think that's probably what the fear could be. Well, what would happen if if the black community becomes so powerful and have so much money? You know what? What would they do then? When, what would happen if they start putting us to work? You know, we're working for them. Will they try to uh, institutionalize uh, uh, slavery or discrimination? Or would they have this institution where they can bring things back on us? And I think, I think that's part of, of probably part of the fear themselves that we have angry black men running around uh, ready to just 
uh, wage revenge on something that happened to him when he was a child or something you've seen happen to his dad or his mom or whomever. Um, but that, you know, that's, that's to me, that's, that's uh, perpetuating the problems within our community. And, and what we have to do is move forward in, in, a, in a clean, clean way. And I think the cleanest way to move forward is gaining some of that economic power yourself. You gain that economic power, we do right by people. You know, I'm, I'm a, a very spiritual person that believes, you know, in God. And, and I believe that, uh, you know, we're all his children and we all should respect each other. And, and, you know, we shouldn't be trying to wage revenge on anybody, you know, because judgment will come to those who, who deserve uh, the revenge. So um, I think, you know, some of the, the whispers or some of the things that's going through our society is, you know, we have some angry black people. You know, we have the, 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 uh, the emotional and erratic black woman and the angry black man that if we give them too much power, you know, they're going to turn it around against us. So I, I think that's more so what the fear is than anything else. I find, you know, teaching, and, and that's, that's my, you know, my zen zone. I teach people about your zen zone, the place that you find your bliss, the place that no one has to encourage you to get to or force you to get to or pay you to get to. It's this place that you would go to willingly because that's your passion, and many times it also doubles as our purpose. Um, you know, I, I find teaching business and entrepreneurship, I love business, you know, I've owned tons of business and done very well for myself. But the, the getting in the trench to teach it, though it can be frustrating, uh, trying to get people to really understand the diabolical mental shift that's necessary for entrepreneurship um, is a very, could be a very taxing thing. But because that's my Zen zone, I can easily get up in front of people and, and, and do it. Um, you know, it's, it, I find, I, it feels like I'm freeing people. That's what it feels like to me. It feels like I'm I'm getting people that may be trapped on jobs. I call them the trapped entrepreneur. Individuals that have these ideas, they know what they want to do, they just don't know how to bring it to the marketplace. They don't know how to frame it into a business. They don't come from a, a lineage of entrepreneurs. They don't know to, to quite know the mindset, uh, the culture of their home, the heritage of their home, uh, the cultures of their community was not contingent on teaching you the mindset of an entrepreneur. And being able to stand in front of people and teach them that and, and really see the light bulbs go off. And I, I can look at in the eyes of people and see when they're having these flashball moments, what I call them. And those flashball moments are, are small shifts, the degrees of, of shift that will make up to the large paradigm shift. And, and I just get a lot of fulfillment bringing to people what I know so well. Um, which is business and you know, entrepreneurship, whether I'm in a, a, a formal classroom teaching at a university or, or any one of my programs uh, or conferences or whatever, when I'm speaking, that's my Zen zone. And I feel like I'm, I'm almost leading people to their promised land. Their promised land is their dream. Uh, I'm leading them there. Uh, by, by, by encouraging them and inspiring them and giving them the step-by-step -step instructional manual on how to be successful in business. There's no other f better feeling like that in the world. Um, and I have three kids, you know. There's no other <laughs> better feeling like that in the world. Uh, and, you know, for other people, their Zen zone may be, uh, you know, teaching and, 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 and not, not teaching, but entertaining, uh, you know, telling jokes, singing songs, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, but to me, that Zen zone, um, you know, that Zen zone is really a craft, you know. Um, you know, you have your instinctual zones and your organic zone, your organic zone, organic zones is, you know, your relationships. You, people don't have to force you to have certain relationships, you know, uh, being a father or, or, or being a husband or being whatever, uh, you, you know, being a son or being a, any, any relationship you decide to, to enter, uh, being a, a, a wife or whatever you decide to enter, that's, you know, the, your, your, uh, that's your organic zone. But that Zen zone is the zone where uh, you find uh, peace because you're, you're really imparting and depositing into people the craft that you've gained and matriculated over all the years that it took you to get to where you're at.